Happy Thursday morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin this morning right here in Venezuela. Today marks the one year anniversary since the beginning of what were known here as the Warembas. Those are the barricades erected in the streets by the political opposition that led to the deaths of 43 people. The disturbances were part of a failed plan by some opposition sectors to remove democratically elected President Nicolas Maduro. They followed yet another victory by pro-Chavez forces the previous December. For around three months, violent opposition sectors made it impossible for some to get to hospitals or schools. They blocked roads and impeded the arrival of food. They destroyed vast amounts of public property that included buses, buildings and community media. The, improvi the improvised and unorganized tactics led to, the death, led to deaths and injuries. Moving to Europe now to Ukraine, a new ceasefire will come into effect on Sunday after a year of conflict. That uh, the ceasefire deal was reached in marathon negotiations in Belarus between European powers. It began yesterday but stretched on for around 15 hours. A previous ceasefire deal was reached last September but quickly collapsed. We agreed on a lot. We agreed on the ceasefire starting from 12 a.m. of February 15. And we cross now to our correspondent in Colombia. That's where a group of experts on gender issues have met with both the FARC and the government. Here's our correspondent, Natalia Margarita. Women's rights advocate Patricia Ariza was part of the first delegation of experts on gender to directly participate in Colombia's peace talks. Now, a second delegation has arrived in Havana to discuss the integration of gender perspectives within the context of an expected peace agreement. We hope to tell the country the messages that we have brought to Havana because peace will be signed there, but it's also built here on our territory. The issue of gender is very important. There has been lots of distortions and lies, so it is very important to clarify and also to value the effort that both the insurgency and the government have made to bring this topic to the negotiations. For Patricia, it is significantly important and even historic that a gender commission is being included in Colombia's peace negotiations. For her, it is an attempt to recognize and clarify the deep damages that the armed conflict has caused, especially to women. They are the ones who are burdened with mourning, pain, death and illness. There has also been lots of sexual violence against women, especially by paramilitaries. Those are crimes against humanity. We need to expose the truth. That is why talking about the conflict is very important. As experts and victims bring their accounts to the peace talks, the Commission for Historic Conflict has also submitted a report aimed to contribute to the debate on what happened and why it happened, something crucial for the victims seeking for truth. This material obviously offers important information and details about the context of the events and processes that produced the victims, so in that sense it will help the victims. Meanwhile, the FARC's Gender Commission has released a statement welcoming the women that have arrived in Havana and also highlighting the importance of recognizing the struggles of Colombian women as well as their role in the ongoing peace process. From Bogotá, Natalia Margarita, Telesur. And in Honduras now, disability associations are demanding more funding for public projects as well as the passing of laws which have been blocked in the National Congress. With more, here's our correspondent, Gerardo Torres. Disabled people in Honduras are trying to get by with almost zero support from the government, with the state assigning 40 cents a year to each person with a disability. There are more than 700,000 people with a disability. 90% of them do not work, are unemployed. In 2005, the Law of Equity and Integral Development for People with Disabilities was created with Decree 160, and there was an assignation of 6 million lempiras under the government of Ricardo Maduro. Then the Celaya government raised it to 10 million, but in 2013, Porfirio Lobo reduced it to 5 million. In 2014, Juan Orlando Hernandez merged the Department of Disability with the Department of Senior Citizens. 
Last year, lawmaker Fanny Valladares presented a law to give support to young people with a physical disability by creating a special education center to help them develop and find work. The law hasn't been taken into consideration by the National Congress. The law was presented last year and was written together with the three federations of people with disabilities and with the Association of Parents and Students with Disabilities. It is based on the state guaranteeing the existence of special education centres that assure education. According to the National Migration Centre, the number of people with disability has doubled in the last 10 years due to the severe accidents people suffer in their attempt to enter the United States. This is another matter that disability organizations are asking the government to be attentive to. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. In Mexico now, social organizations and leadership of the Sonora State Yaku tribe continue to fight against a now operating state-sponsored aqueduct project that they say robs the community of their water. Now, as our correspondent Clayton Kahn reports, they also say it attacks their constitutional rights as indigenous people. Outside of Mexico's Supreme Court, civil organizations presented a damning report over how Sonora state and federal authorities have consistently violated the rights of the Yaqui indigenous tribe in their defense of water and territory with the construction of a massive aqueduct project. The report shows grave human rights violations made against the Yaqui tribe, such as the right to previous consultation of the construction, authorization, operation of the independence aqueduct and without taking into account the decision of the Yaqui people. In late January, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the functionality of the polemic Independence Aqueduct. Yaki leaders called the decision blatantly illegal as the state-sponsored project, functioning since 2010, was constructed without an impact analysis. You can't decide if the project is legal or not, and you can't concede if you don't define or determine the environmental, human, anthropological, social, economic, and cultural impacts. Civil organizations in solidarity with the tribe say the Yaqui's defense of their natural resources and the criminalization of their struggle is exemplary of Mexico's other indigenous communities. The aggressions that the Yaqui tribe has suffered are an example of the aggressions that all indigenous people are facing. There is a very aggressive, predatory, criminal and inhumane process of displacement occurring. For the Yaqui tribe, these aggressions have translated into the criminalization of their spokesmen. This past year, their leaders Mario Luna and Fernandez Jimenez were detained for their participation in organizing protests against the aqueduct. Yaqui leaders here say that their struggle for water ultimately represents a struggle for their traditions, lifestyle, and existence. Clayton Khan, Telesur, Mexico City. To the United States now, criticisms of mainstream media have poured in from activists and social media users following the murder of three young Muslims there in the United States. Many of them are comparing that coverage to that of the shootings last month in Paris. Thousands of people attended a vigil on the University of North Carolina campus in Chapel Hill yesterday. They attended to commemorate three Muslim students who were shot dead in a nearby apartment the day before. Vigil attendees lit candles, hugged and paid their last respects to Dei Barakat Yusur Abu Salah and Rasan Abu Salah. They were all allegedly shot by neighbor Craig Stephan Higgs on Tuesday. Higgs was arrested after the shooting and appeared briefly in court early Wednesday. Into Italy now, protesters gathered outside the German embassy yesterday to rally against the EU's austerity programs and show solidarity with Greek anti-austerity party Syriza, which is currently in talks with Eurogroup members. Much of the protesters' anger was directed at Germany's Chancellor, Angela Merkel, who many hold responsible for imposing an unachievable, unachievable bailout program on European countries. The protest was one of many held across Europe today, rallying under the motto of, quote, support the Greek people's fight against deadly austerity. Ending with a cultural note today, Vietnam and some other Asian countries are preparing to mark the biggest holiday of the year, the Lunar New Year. Vietnamese officials released carp into a lake in Hanoi yesterday to celebrate. According to Vietnamese folklore, each household has kitchen fairies or gods. 
they're called Ang Tao, and they will go to heaven to report on the household in the last year and ask for good luck in the next, and it's believed the carp will carry the Ang Tao on their journey. This year, starting on February 19th, is the year of the goat. More on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English for Telesur English. I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great Thursday.